Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise in the house today? Amen, hallelujah. Can we do better than that this morning? Praise his holy name this morning, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus in this house, amen. Hallelujah, we got more coming on in. God bless you this morning for coming, amen. little rainy, little cold this morning, but it feels good to be in the house of the Lord. Can you say Amen. Amen. This is no other place I'd rather be than the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. I praise God for what he's doing, what he's going to do, and what he's going to continue to do. Amen. This day, we are looking forward to having a good time in the Lord, looking forward to some good worship, and looking forward to an anointed word. I'm ready for pastor's word. How many is ready for that this morning? Amen. I'm looking forward to what God's going to do in the house and I appreciate the Lord. Amen. Uh, I don't have really any announcements, but I will tell you this. Uh, we are doing Impact this month, and I will get with you, like I said, hopefully Monday or Tuesday to give you a date uh, to confirm that day for Impact. And I'll be looking at some new territory to go to, and uh, we will do our thing as Impact goes, and we will uh, share the Word of God. Amen. We will share it through love, share it through kindness. And just show this world Jesus. How many knows that that's what this world needs is Jesus. Amen. And this world is lost and dying, going to hell. But you know what? It's time that this generation stands up. Amen. It's time we take back what is ours. Come on, somebody. Amen. Take back what the devil stole from us. Amen. And, and say enough is enough. How many can say that this morning? And uh, I'm looking forward to what God's going to do in the house. Amen. So with that being said, I want our ushers to come this morning and get ready to receive our offering and tithes this morning. Amen. If you would. And as they come, you give as God has blessed. And uh, like I always say, you cannot outgive God. Amen. He is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And I appreciate the Lord for what he's doing. And I uh, thank God to have our brother in the back. God bless you this morning for being with us. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Give him a hand, would you? Make him feel at home this morning. Amen. Here, I want to tell you, you're at your father's house this morning. Amen. You feel led. If you feel led by the Spirit to run, jump, shout, cry, honey, you do what the Lord wants you to do this morning. Amen. Just obey the voice of the Lord. And you will never go wrong obeying the voice of God. Can you say Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's all stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for our tithes and offerings this morning. And let's ask God to have his will and have his way in this house. Help me pray, would you? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. Thankful, God, will be another day in your house. Thank you for waking us up this morning, God, putting fresh breath in our body, God. Father, I pray that your glory would fill this house this morning, God. I pray in everything we say and do, God, let your glory be most dominant in this house, Father. I pray for every soul that's in attendance, God, every person watching by live stream, God, everybody under the sound of my microphone, God. I pray you'd bless them right now, God. Bless all the sick and the shut-in, Father. Holy Ghost, you're welcome in this house, Lord. Have your way in all that's said and done, God. Bless the worship. Bless the offering, God. Bless the word today, God. Bless those that have it to give and those that don't, Father. God, I pray you'd move us out of the way this morning. And God, set your spirit in our place, God. Help us to crucify our flesh this morning, Father. Because, Lord, it's not about me. It's not about them. But, God, God, it's all about you this morning, God. Have your will, have your way in everything that's said and done this morning. We give you praise, honor, glory in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen. As you're taking the offering, turn around, shake somebody's hand, say it's good to be in the house of God this morning, amen. Hallelujah. Can we praise them one more time, church? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes. 
pastor keeps talking about this song, so we'll finally do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I was alone and I don't, I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven telling me there is work to do. I took my master's hand and I joined that heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. To Jesus over in that promised land. In this land I trod, my sinner called to God. Now I'm on the battlefield for oh my Lord. Help me say it, church. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for oh my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for oh my Lord. Oh, I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield. Let's put a praise on it right here. Come on. I like this verse. Oh, I'm fighting for my Savior. This battle's almost won. The trouble will be still. The coming of the sun. Well, I lay my armor down and take up my robe and crown, and I walk the road and street with my Lord. Cause I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised Him that I would serve Him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Almost the one, the trumpet will be sounding, the coming of the sun. But I'll lay my armor down and take up my robe and crown, and I'll walk the golden street with my Lord. Cause I'm on the battlefield for oh my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for oh my Lord. Oh, I promised Him that I would serve Him till I die. For my Lord, yes, I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Hey, anybody still fighting this morning? Anybody still in the battle for Jesus? He's worthy of the praise. We only got one more river to cross this morning. One more battle to fight. I'm glad this morning that it's almost over. Somebody say yes. I'm ready to go home. How about you this morning?
start going through with Jesus, hallelujah. Hold it to his nail scar hand. I'm holding to his nail scar hand. Listen, you know I've had a lot of troubles and trials in my little life span. Though I stand alone and the battle gets hot, I always do the best I can. I've climbed a lot of high mountains. I've shed a million tears. Though I see old Jordan cold and dark, then I'll have no fear. Hallelujah, hold it to his nail scarred hand. I hold it to his nail. If you're going through, shout yeah! Woo! Boy! Hey. I love this second verse. Talk about me Cause I walk this narrow way That's just another little valley But I came through it when I prayed I've climbed a lot of high mountains I've crossed a lot of red streams But when I see my Jesus on the other side That'll be the last for me Oh, that'll be the last for me Cause I got a one more river to cross One more mountain to climb I got one more valley that I gotta go through and my trouble behind me. I gotta walk for a battle with the devil And I know he'll understand That I'm a going through with Jesus Hallelujah I'm holding to his nail scar And I'm holding to his nail scar One more time Well I got a one more river to cross One more mountain to climb I got one more valley that I gotta go through Even my trouble behind me. I gotta walk for a battle with the devil And I know Hallelujah, hold it to his nail scarred hand. I'm holding to his nail scarred hand. Yes, I know I'm going through with Jesus. Hallelujah, hold it to his nail scarred hand. Oh, hold it to his nail scarred hand. Woo! If you're going through this morning, shout yes. Shout Jesus in the house. If you're going through with Jesus, shout yes. Glory to God. so glad that whenever I can't do it, Jesus can. There's been many times in my life, Sister Christy, I discounted myself because there's so much bad in me at times, I feel like I'm not good enough to even go to him. But you know what, Brother Frank, I'm glad that when I can't go to him, hallelujah, that's when he comes down to me, amen. I'm glad that I'm worthy enough through the cross of Calvary. He made you worthy this morning on the cross of Calvary. He said we can come boldly, hallelujah, to the throne of God and obtain mercy this morning. How many needs mercy this morning? I want to do this old song this morning, and I love these old songs because they hold such truth and such power. And it simply says, you know what, if you feel like nobody loves you and all your friends have gone away, you know what, I can't do it, but I know a man who can this morning, amen? It goes like this, hallelujah. Let it bless you this morning, glory to God. I can't take a heart that's broken, make it over again, but I soul that's sinful wash it white as the snow but I know a man who can some call him Savior the Redeemer of all men but I call him Jesus 
your troubled sea But I know a man who can Oh, hallelujah I can't cause blind eyes to open Or make the lame to walk again For he's my dearest friend Now if you feel that no one loves you And your love is out of hand Well I know a man who can I feel it one more time just like that Raise your hands and sing it with me Some call him Savior the Redeemer of all men. Oh, but I, I just call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. If you feel that no one loves you and your life is out of hand, well, I. sing this this morning. Oh, Jesus, 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 there's just something Woo! about that name. Master, say Bye. 
But there's something about that name. Oh, yes, there's something about that name. If you know that name is Jesus, give it praise on the house this morning. Hallelujah. house this morning. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I feel the healer in the house this morning. Hallelujah. I said, I feel the healer in the house this morning. Somebody just say that name, Jesus, right where you are. Hallelujah. Grab your neighbor beside you. Start proclaiming Jesus over them this morning. Say Jesus over them, Jesus. He's the fix-it man this morning. He's the healer, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you. Sing that together. Oh, Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. God wants to do something this morning. Will you let him? Oh, Master, Savior, Jesus. Like a fragrance after woo, the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. serve a God that's more than able that the words said in Isaiah they called him wonderful counselor I'm thankful to know that we serve a God who doesn't just sit on the throne but he loves us this morning I'm just thankful this morning that he loves you this oh, yes, morning yes. that when I sing that name Jesus it's, it reminds me that no matter what I go through that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible tells us that he came as a servant and that he was humbled. But it said that God gave unto him a name that is above all names. How many is thankful to know that he may, may have came like a servant, that he came humble, but God said, 
but I'm giving him authority in that name that whosoever believe on him out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water that when we sing that name Jesus that's the thing is a lot of times we wonder why things can't move but how many of those it says you can't go to the Father but through me that whenever you say in the name of Jesus I wish somebody just begin to say in the name of Jesus see there's power in that name there's power in that name when you begin to say Jesus devils have to flee when you say Jesus depression has to leave the mind it's a name that was given unto him that even heaven has to line up at that name that when you say father in the name of Jesus he has to listen I'm thankful to know that he bore the weight of my sin for I was unworthy to ask of the Father. But when Jesus said it was finished, there was a blood cost that was paid on your life that in my unworthiness, in my iniquity, in my wrongdoings. But when I say Father in the name of Jesus, he, has to, he no longer looks at my faults. He no longer looks at what I did wrong. He sees a lamb without blemish that was worthy, that was deemed worthy by the way of the cross. How many is thankful this morning that when you go to the Father in the name of Jesus, He doesn't see all your mess. He sees the blood stain on your life. That not only does He see the blood stain, He said, I'm going to send a comforter in the name of Jesus to remind you of the word spoken over you. That's why Hebrews said, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same Jesus that died on the cross, that rose on the third day. The same Jesus that is coming back is the same Jesus this morning at Calvary Cross on Sunday on this rainer day. But how many is thankful that whenever you let all the things that have weighed you down and you just say, you know what, God? I surrender this morning. There's anybody willing to say, God, I surrender this morning. I came in with some mindsets. I came in with some hurt. But thank God I serve a God of restoration, reconciliation, that when I say in the name of Jesus, he lifts my head, the lifter of my head, the restorer of my path. I wish somebody say he restored my path this morning. I was heading down somewhere that I didn't want to go. I was going into that rabbit, chasing that rabbit hole. I was chasing that mindset. But when Jesus showed up this morning, reminded me of the word. So one more time, let's just lift our hands and just sing a song to him. Come on, church. Oh, Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, but my God is with me this morning. Depression might have come after me, but my God is with me this morning. Do I got any saints this morning that said that the weapon might have formed, but my God is still with me this morning. I've still been baptized with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, greater this morning. Now, somebody look at your neighbor and say, greater this morning. 
The Bible said greater is he that is in me that is in the world. The Bible said my weapon is not carnal but mighty through God and pulling down strongholds. Somebody look at your neighbor and say my praise is pulling down a stronghold this morning. My praise is pulling down depression. My praise is pulling down the attack. I got an admitting I praise her. That said, but I got a weapon this morning. That hell is getting nervous. Out of my mouth is laughing. I wish somebody go ahead and speak life in this house this morning. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, say something this morning. Say something. No, 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 no. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, say something this morning. The Bible said that if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you can tell a mountain to move out of your way. How many knows that mountains can't stop you when you get when you get hungry enough this morning. I'm, if you get hungry enough and your face stirs up just enough, hungry. look at your neighbor and say, when you get hungry, that's right, I'm going to say hungry. Because how many knows that the Bible said the heavenly man is the word of God. See, right. when you get hungry, you got to start diving in the word. When you get an appetite for the kingdom, you start reading your word. And when your appetite starts getting in the kingdom, then your face starts rising up. Because how many knows a spiritual gets also the faith that you need in a time of need. Everybody says well Lord I don't know what I'm going to do but how many knows God's giving you a blessing of a supernatural faith this morning. See I came to tell somebody this morning God not only gave you the gifts of the spirit for discernment for the miracle and miraculous but he's also gave you a gift this morning to act, access a supernatural faith that's about to activate in the present. Do I got anybody this morning that said I might have had a grain of faith, but I hear it, feel my help coming this morning. A supernatural kind of faith that can run every devil out of my home, run every mindset that's come against me. I wish I had somebody get desperate enough in the present, hungry enough, ready to move out of where God has put you and say, God, I'm ready to activate a kind of faith that opens up prison doors, to activate a kind of faith when I lift my staff that rivers got, well, see, he's got a Apart. I wish I had some now faith, praises, supernatural faith. That said, when my faith ran out, I can do all things through Christ, which he's the one that in strengthens in me. I wish somebody said, my faith just ran out, but the kingdom faith just showed up. My faith grew weary, but he showed up. I might have want to quit, but the God that don't know the word quit just showed up. How somebody say, it's finished this morning. The attack is finished this morning, because why? The blood. Somebody look at your neighbor and say the blood. Mm. Somebody look at your neighbor and say the blood. I don't know what the Lord has in store this morning, but I feel something in this place. If I'd have to, I do have a sermon this morning. And I feel the Lord definitely has a word for us. But I believe to this morning that God has something in store and not only do I believe there's something in store, I believe God is about to bring a revelation and an enlightenment, enlightenment to somebody that's in a need this morning. How many this morning can say, God, I need a revelation this morning? Lord, I need my eyes open. I need that enlightenment. God, I'm in the middle of the trial. What is next? And as I was praying, if you'll allow me a few minutes of your time to unbag this and what God has given me, I believe that there will be an edification to the word because Paul says, I don't come enticing word of men, but in demonstration of the spirit. How many knows this morning more than ever we need demonstration of the spirit back in the house of God again? What's the difference between believers and a seminar is that we have the spirit of God that shows up on our behalf that validates the living God. But a lot of us, like we said on Thursday, know the word, but do you know the God of the word? Do you have that intimate relationship with him, and are you walking in the spirit? A lot of us wonder why we're under the attacks we're on is because we're walking in cardinality. We're walking cardinal-minded, and the Bible tells us to be cardinal-minded is death, but to be spiritual-minded is life. How many this morning can say, Lord, I got a spiritual mind this morning, or how many of us came in with a cardinal mindset that we feel like we're on our way out that the attack might get you listen that's nothing against you that happens in life we have a battle of the mind somebody say battle of the mind and how does the enemy work he works with facts misinformation and disinformation you 
know how we work now. We see it more than ever with propaganda, different things that people want to feed because they know that if you'll entertain something long enough, it can be, begin to change the perception of the mind in which you receive the information. How many knows that it's a war over information right now? Y'all listen to me this morning. There is a war of information. Now, we can get political, but we're not going to get political. But there is a war of information on what the Bible says and people diluting what the Bible says. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, if we understand what facts are, what is facts? Facts are anything that is known or proved to be true. Look at your neighbor say true. When we think about disinformation, what is disinformation? False information which is intended to mislead, especially propaganda issued by a government organization to rival the power or the media. How many knows that there's always some kind of disinformation that's going on in, in the day and time in the body that tries to, you got a hundred different ways that the gospel's preached, but how many knows there's only one way that the gospel will stand? Y'all didn't hear me this morning. There's a hundred different ways that the gospel's preached, but there's only one way that the gospel will stand. When we understand different disinformation, it is misleading. It's propaganda. It's something that they just boom, boom, hit you in the face all the time. You hear it all the time. They condition you to be, think that this is all right. And how many knows that every Sunday on the pulpit, you got people that are propaganding an opposite antichrist spirit in the church? The Antichrist spirit has always been around. And what is the Antichrist? It's exactly what it said. It's Antichrist. It's misleading. It comes to discredit the work of what God, Jesus did on Calvary. And when we know that the spirit that is working in us, how does it have to work? It has to work by the information and in what is received. It has to be propaganda. It has to be, it has to be let out. You got to hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it. How many knows this morning that sometimes you can catch yourself hearing the wrong thing? And when we understand disinformation, then we can understand misinformation. Now, what is misinformation? Mis misinformation is an effect that refers to a tendency for a post-event information to interfere with the memory. Listen, what is all these first, these two things? Information, but there's only one truth. Now, how does the enemy work? First, the enemy has to prop up. He has to what? Get you to see something all the time. That what you see, the propaganda that pushes, right? It's a false motive. It's an antichrist spirit that says, well, you know, you can come to church, but you ain't got to sell out like they say you got to sell out. That's a lie of the enemy. That's propaganda. That's telling you you can live a lukewarm Christianity and you're going to be all right. But my Bible says that either you're hot or you're cold. And if you're lukewarm, you're spewed out of the mouth. What is that? That is a disinformation propaganda that is spewed every Sunday that says that God's love will sustain you in sin. But the Bible said he loved me yet why I was a sinner. But he didn't love me to keep me a sinner. He loved me to bring me out of the wages sin that gave me a new destination that gave me a new mindset that changed the way I received my information but where does the enemy fight us by the information of the mind and how we receive it why does the Bible say for he has given me a sound mind not of fear but of power and love of Jesus Christ what is the enemy after the mind because if the enemy can get in the mind then he can begin to work on you he can begin you to enter thing. He can begin to get the disinformation that begins well I might think that's alright just to compromise a little bit. How many this morning is sitting here not going back to the world but way in between uh, compromising saying well maybe if I'll give an inch here it might work out for the greater purpose. That's how the enemy works with the disinformation. It's the propaganda that the enemy uses that says if the body will bend on their standard then they'll bring them in but you're bringing them in on the wrong purpose the Bible said having done all you can do stand some more with your feet shod in the peace and the preparation of the gospel what is the gospel the good news of Jesus that lived and he loved me died and he saved me carried my sins away he didn't die so I can still be a junkyard dog he died so I can be royalty and his him is dressed in the linen cloth oh somebody better praise him in this house you might have been a 
junkyard dog wondering for your next meal. But when Jesus said, I'm breaking the chain, I'm taking you out of the junkyard and I'm bringing you to the table. But see, the enemy works with disinformation and says you can still live like a junkyard dog chained up to a chain and all you know is your junkyard. But I'm here to tell you, God didn't intend for you to stay in the junkyard. He said, I'm breaking the chain. This dog has got to eat. This dog has got set free. I wish somebody said this dog has been set free. I used to have to look how my car was going to run. I used to wonder how I was going to find it. And all I ever known was the used up scraps of everybody else. But I know my Bible said, behold, I do a new thing. You can't find what God is wanting to do for you in a junkyard. He got it in the kingdom. But the enemy has messed this thing up with disinformation. That says you got to settle for the junkyard scrap. My Bible ain't a God of scrap. He said he brings new things. Behold, you're a new creation. I'm not that junkyard anymore. I'm royalty filled with a Holy Ghost. Though I might go to the junkyard, it's not there to stay. It's there to pull your chain out and bring you to the kennel. Somebody better say, I'm bringing you out of the junkyard today. I'm breaking the chain. Because the Bible said he does a new thing. I ain't meant to stay somewhere God done set me free from. The next time I go back, I'm bringing somebody out with me. I wish I had some saints saying, I'm bringing somebody out with me. But why can't we bring people out? Disinformation, propaganda. Propaganda, that does what? It's misleading. It's not the full truth. It's not totally wrong, but it's what? Misleading. How do we live a misleading, sanctified, Holy Ghost living life for Jesus? Misleading is to say that anything other than your all to Jesus is not okay. Now that's why it said work out your own fear and salvation and trembling through what? Come on church, you know this. The word of what? God. But what happens? There's a misleading factor that says guess what? You can just stay the way you are. But the Bible said once sin is known under your heart and the Holy Ghost reveals it to you, you are accountable for that mess and to come out of it. But we live in a generation that's misleading. That says as well, as long as you're trying, but if God has already wrote on your heart that you need to give something up and you're still staying in that junkyard and thinking it's all right, that's a misleading lie of the enemy. Once God puts something on you, God has given you the strength to come out of it. But the misleading factor is is that the enemy says, well, God put it on your heart, but that's condemnation. No, that's misleading. That is conviction that brings you to lie, that's bringing you out of a stronghold. And see, we wonder why nobody can get broke free because we got disinformation in the church. That says you can still live like a busted up sinner and expect God to change things. No, 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 no. I'm not saying the way the grace was sufficient enough, but faith in my my grace allows me to walk in sanctification. Salvation is eternal, but sanctification is what? Daily by the renewing of my mind. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind and the acceptable will of God. God said, be ye holy as I am. What is he saying? I died for you to come completely out of the chains of the junkyard so that you can come back and pull others out of the junkyard. How can you pull somebody out of a junkyard if your chain is still nailed in the ground of the junkyard? So what we got is a bunch of people that are chained up in a junkyard crying at a devil. Oh, y'all better understand, crying at the devil while we're all in the junkyard because nobody's willing to break the chain. But when somebody gets mad enough, that's right, the Bible said, be ye angry, but sin not. You can get mad at the devil, that's right. You can get mad at him him, you can pray, you can tell that devil not today. How many today can say not today devil? Some of us in our mind are already pouting on God. I'm not here telling you you're going to go to hell but I'm telling you God's saying it's time to come out of the junkyard and it's time to take your seat at the table. We want the overflow while still sitting in the junkyard eating on the scrap. God ain't going to pour his Holy Ghost water in a nasty, nasty cup. He needs a pure vessel so that the cup can roll over 
over. And that's why we got to repent. And what is repent? Repent is a heart issue, not an action issue. Uh-oh. We're getting there. Repenting is not an action issue. It's a heart issue. Because how many knows that as you grow with the Lord, certain things that you thought were wrong or certain things you thought okay, that can change by the level and the depthness that you go with God. There's some things I thought were all right when I first got saved, but the more I went with God and my heart began to change, I realized there's a whole lot more I need to repent of. But it was never the actions, it's the heart that we repent of. Because what does the Bible say? So if the man think it out of the heart, so it the man is. So what is repentance? Repentance is my heart turning back to God and his full will. But we also live in a misleading generation that bases everything on actions. Listen, Listen, if you clean the inside of the cup, the outside of the cup will represent what's inside the cup. So what we have is people treating symptoms rather than going after the root cause of the problem. And when the church stops doing misleading and focusing all the action and go after the heart of the issue, you better watch out because people will start coming out of the junkyard and being who God called them to be. But we have to understand, where does the enemy fight? Where are we at right now? By information. Let your neighbor say information. Now when we understand misinformation, let your neighbor say misinformation. What does it say? It refers to a tendency for the post of information that interferes with the memory. Now that's a big one. It interferes with the memory. You hear a lot of songs. What does the Bible tell us in Revelation? For you're overcomer by the word of your what? testimony and by the blood of the lamb for they love not their lives and the favor so what does the enemy have to make you mess with the memory why does he got to mess with the memory to make you second guess your testimony Come on, y'all listening this is teaching this morning I don't need you shout I need your heart to get right what I want you to know is that when you understand misinformation, it's the way you remember something. If you know them old songs, do you remember where he brought me from? How many knows if the enemy can plant something in your head that never really happened, it can affect your memory? Uh-oh. Y'all ain't wanting to listen this morning. Because how many knows that's why the Bible said that you got to stay in the Word? Because why the moment you get out of the Word, the enemy fights in the mind. And see, your testimony was never in the mind. It's in the heart. My God. And see, if you don't stay in repentance with God, reminding the heart of the testimony, and the testimony's only here in your mind, then the enemy can manipulate your testimony. Did I really get set free? Did you really come through like you came through? Is there anybody willing to be honest up in here? You've been warm with the fact of what God brought you from because why the enemies kept your testimony just right here but the deeper you go with God the testimony no longer stays in the mind it gets a hold of the heart and when a testimony gets hold of the heart hell cannot stop you hell cannot contain you as the Bible said no weapon it also says where the gates of hell shall not prevail so what does the enemy work with he wants to keep your testimony right here in the mind because he can manipulate it as long as it never gets here but when a church finally says I'm done just thinking about what God did. I'm going to live in what God did, and I'm going to let my testimony get a hold of my heart. And when the enemy tries to say, well, do you remember it this way? You can snap back and say, but devil, you're a liar. I remember the way my heart used to be. I remember how I used to war, but God got a hold of my heart. My testimony is not just memory. It's in the heart. Because if I wouldn't have been set free, there would have been a different tune I would have come at you at. If I wouldn't have been set free, I'd have still had a victim mentality. If I hadn't have been set free, I wouldn't be sanctified this morning. It's not by why I dressed or how I act. It's that my heart is only his and his alone. And him I live and him I worship. I wish somebody say Jesus this morning. But the enemy fights with information and misinformation. Because why? If you ever notice this, the Bible said that in the presence of the Lord there's liberty. There's liberty. What am I trying to tell you? A sinner can come in the presence of God and feel the presence of God. Because it's on this present. But what's the difference? It rains on the just and the unjust. Everybody thinks storm, but rain is also a symbolic of life. 
So what am I trying to tell you? Even a sinner in the presence of God will feel the rain. But the difference is believer has seed when the rain comes. So how do we have seed? Seed comes by walking out in faith. That the information's not just here, it's in the heart. I've allowed the seed to take root in my heart. And I'm growing and I'm walking in the spirit. So when the presence of the Lord and we engage it and the rain comes, guess what? There is a harvest that comes out of it. So what does the enemy know? He gets us living, chasing after the presence because we're addicted to the present but not willing enough to really get a hold of the real thing. We got a bunch of drug addict Christians that are only in it for the feel good, but not really in it to get transformed totally in his image. Oh, yo. We got a bunch of Christians that want to hit on addicts, but you're just addicted to the present and not hungry enough to really have him change you. What we got is an addiction problem in the church. We're addicted to the run and the shout, but on Monday, I live like a donkey, live like hell, and wonder why the enemy's still up on your front door, why the enemy can still mess with your Kool-Aid. Now, there's a misinformation misleading that said, as long as you can run and shout, you're all right. No, 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 no. My Bible said until I can walk in the authority of of God lay hands on the sick and they recover and I can prophesy and I can walk into places I ain't there yet and if I ain't there yet that means my heart ain't right yet because all he said if my heart's right then he can flow out of me we have to understand that the God of truth is calling us in the true relationship and intimacy that can only come by the spirit but we're addicted to the church service. We're addicted to the church service. We're addicted to the organ. We're addicted to that Pentecostal beat. We're addicted to the drums. We're addicted to all that. Those are fine products of what God did to somebody, but you ought to be able to raise your hands and worship God if an instrument never sounds off. Because why? You got an instrument, your voice. He said, I want to hear your voice more than I do the tambourine. I want to hear your voice more than the cymbal. Because why? Only your voice has life or death. The tambourine and the cymbals edify him in worship, but your voice moves heaven. I wish somebody that would say, I'm just not in it for the worship, but we need to move heaven heaven and until we can get the information right of what God wants all we'll do is worship in the present but no harvest that comes from the rain there's a misleading the enemy doesn't care that you congregate on Sunday and shout God down He cares that there will be a seed in you, that when the rain comes, there will be a harvest come off you. Right now you got a lot of people that can run and shout in the prayer because the Bible said there's liberty. There's liberty. We love that. Praise God. You know what that is? My mind gets renewed. You ever notice that? You can come in, beat up, discuss it up here, preach or preach. The anointing's there. You feel good. Walk right back out. Your mind gets right back under hell, right under the, under the affliction of the enemy. Because why? It didn't travel the rest of the 18 inches to the heart. Now, what am I trying to say? That's why you need the altar. And the church don't preach altars no more. The only time we think we need an altar is if you're living in sin and busted up. No, 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 no. Leviticus say don't let the fire on the altar go out. Because why? The altar is a place of sacrifice and give giving to God. When I come to an altar, it's not just rep- to be able to say, God, I need you to help me. The altar is a place I live. It's where I go and say, God, here is my body. Here is my heart. The enemy has fought me, but I've come to an altar to sacrifice who I am. That reminds me that though I live, Christ lives through me. The misinformation is that an altar is only for a drug addict or somebody that's an adulterer or a fornicator. Though the altar is for the true believer that says, my God, I got to live on an altar. So my heart stays right. I got to live on an altar where I know what the fact is. Because the moment I get off the altar, the enemy comes in. And I know whining and dining people say, well, that's that's just a mean, that's just a sad thing. Well, that's your problem. That's the misinformation of the church. They make the altar like a sad place. You ought to rejoice at the altar. That's why David said when I enter into the court, I enter in with praise and thanksgiving. How can you praise? I'm about to go somewhere to sacrifice because David knew that I'm about to get thankful for what he's done for me because I'm about to enter in somewhere hell can't chase me in. I'm about to go somewhere where the addiction can't go. I'm about 
got to go somewhere that depression can't go. I'm going to enter into the inner core. I'm going to light my aroma and my incense. You know why they got a light aroma? Your praise is the aroma. So I got to enter in with thanksgiving to get my mind right. Now I can enter into the second core. Lighting of the incense. Covering in the atonement of the blood on the corners of the altar. Now my aroma goes up. My praise goes up. Hebrews said by the blood of Jesus I enter in confidently into the holy of holy. Now my aroma, my praise go. Now from there what happens? I go to the holy. I go behind the veil. Uh oh. How many of us tonight, this morning, can say you've been behind the veil? Let me tell you, the enemy makes you feel like you got to wait for revival before you can go behind the veil. And I tell you, it is your right by being a born-again Christian. You can go across the veil 24-7, 365, 12 months of the year. But there's a misleading information that says you can only go across the veil if the service is just right, if the shout's just right. But can I tell you, you're a different difference maker. If nobody else wants to enter in, I'm going to enter in. Because if I enter in, I'm bringing glory out. And when glory comes, enemies get exposed. They fall on their face. But we can't lose the altar because without the altar, you can't go to the holy place. And we've lost the main thing that gives us our authority, the altar. An altar is a place of giving, sacrifice, because Galatians tells us, he said, though I live, Christ lives through me. Though I live, Christ lives through me. Though I live in the flesh. Check that. Flesh. But the flesh was what? Crucified. So how do I keep the flesh under submission? The altar. The altar is there to take your cardinal mind and the body of sin that is waging against you and keeping it dead on an altar. But we can't preach dead flesh because we got a church that entertains the flesh. God, I'm going to preach. We want to preach how you're going to be rich, have a million dollars, how this and this and this. I don't know about you. Jesus didn't die to glorify your flesh or your bank account. He came to glorify your inheritance in the kingdom. He came to say, for my treasures are in heaven where they will not rust or nor they ma. But we live in a generation that says you must be out of alignment with God if you ain't got a cent to your account. But last time I checked, the son of man had nowhere to lay his head but only the shirt on his back but we got people preaching that you ought to be driving Bentleys and Jaguars and that means you're anointed that means you're a sellout because if you'll sell out on the altar you won't have enough money like that to live bougie fine you'll be sowing it back into the kingdom I'm here to tell you if God gives you access and more it's meant to sow back out into your community but we don't got a holy living church because the church don't know the altar we've gotten too busy on personality Instagram, Facebook, Facebook Facebook share. We live in a generation that America has turned the church into a business where they can get rich and fame. But I don't know about you. I have no other lover but Jesus. Lord, don't let them see me, but let them see the cross. God, let me stay on the altar where my heart stays right. Don't let my information be misleading. Don't ever let me preach a sermon, God, that says you're going to have it your way and God's going to bless you in your own self. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life and no man come through the Father but through me. You won't be able to write a check to get into heaven, but you'll need the blood to get into heaven. I said, I knew you. I longed for you. I talked with you. I abided with you because it was more than the show. I'm addicted to Jesus and walking after him. We don't need to be addicted to the shout. We need to be addicted to Jesus. Jesus, I need you. I need you in my all my being because the moment I come out of you, God, the devil's on the fence waiting. He's waiting for you to walk out of alignment because he knows where you've been. You've been marked with a paw and he's going to torment you because why? It's not that God allowed it. You got out of alignment with God that allowed the enemy to get in your Kool-Aid. Misleading. Disinformation. I may not even get the scripture. Misleading. Disinformation. I'm so mad at the devil. I'm mad at the devil. There's a spirit of an antichrist in the church. 
Everybody's waiting on the one that's going to take the mark. That's all you hear about. The mark, the mark, the mark. The Bible said you're taking the mark before the mark's even here. There's a lot of us saying mark, 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 mark. But guess what the Bible said? You've already made your decision before the mark ever come. What am I trying to tell you? You will take the mark without knowing it's the mark because your life is a product of falling after the mark. But we live in this donkey generation that's like, well, vaccine, unvaccinated. I think it's the mark. I don't know what the mark is. But I do know that it said your daily life has already decided what mark you took because the mark is your worship unto the B system and the B system is following after the world and the riches of the world. What did he tempt Jesus with? He didn't. He tempted him with the riches and the kingdom of this world. And there's a lot of preachers right now that want the riches and the acceptance of the world and they already took the mark of the beast and they're misleading and deceiving because Matthew 24 says that many shall come in my name and if it be possible to seek the elect and we need to wake up in the church that says there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of disinformation that's trying to to mess up with our minds and what we remember of what God did but the only way we're going to get it back church is we got to get back on the altar read his word and say God don't let my mind follow after the false God but let me stay on the altar where my heart is renewed that I may be a light unto many but misinformation disinformation it's misinformation it's how I remember it how do I remember it? How do I know that we're in a bad place? It's all right to remember what our saints and heritage, but most of us young timers say, well, I think grandma done it this way. I think granddaddy done it this way. What are we trying to do? Remember. How many knows as long as it's staying right here and remembering, the enemy can taint it. But once you get a hold of what granddaddy and grandmama really had was is that they knew how to sacrifice and stay on an altar. You can't remember how granddaddy did it. You're going to have to pray what brought granddaddy through. Y'all ain't listening. But we don't want to do that. We want the mantles without the sacrifice. We want the call without the prayer. We want all the bag and all the goods without taking the cost what got the good. And I tell you, you can mimic it, shout it, people shout you down, but there's no a mimicking the anointing cause anointing breaks yo and that's what we need in the church we shouldn't have to wonder if somebody be set free if somebody can do it my bible said that the anointing will break every yoke every chain we gotta have a body raise up that said I'm not after it chasing it after how they did it God I know how they got it on the altar between the porches and the altar with fasting and weeping and saying God heal our nation But there's misinformation. It goes two ways. What is carnal minded? Carnal minded is one. If you go to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, there's a count in the Bible where there was a young man that was sleeping with his stepmother in 1 Corinthians. They applauded him in one chapter. 2 Corinthians, they rejected him and they condemned him. Same man, two different mindsets, but both mindsets were cardinal. Because why? Anytime there's a rebuke, there ought to be a path of restoration. A path of reconciliation. So anytime there's, how do we got to do it? We can't handle it this way or that way. We got to handle it the way the word said. That there ought to be an amending of the nets. The disciples, what did they have to do when they dragged the bottom of the Sea of Galilee? What did it do? It would rip the net. And what do they have to do? Amend it. Because why? If you don't amend it, you're dragging the sea and the fish are coming out because the net is not. What am I trying to tell you? The church has came under misinformation and disinformation because they traded it for truth's sake what somebody tells you rather than finding it right here. And that's the truth. The truth says if you'll go to the altar and sacrifice to him and live as Christ lived, my Bible said I can do all things through Christ. If you abide in me and my word abide, ask, and it shall be given. Bible says you have none because you 
ask none. What is all these product? Relationship. Nobody wants the relationship but the product of the man. Y'all ain't listening. Jesus ain't a 50 cents hoe. He is the way. He's looking for a marriage. He's looking for somebody to bind the congregation. That's why he said a bride, not a midnight call. Y'all ain't listening. Y'all can get offended that I said that, but that's how you treat Jesus. Sister Katie said at one time we were cleaning out their store, and there was a picture of Jesus in the storage. Everybody wants Jesus in your storage, but you're only going to pull him out when you need it. That's why the church is in the hell it's in. We've kept Jesus in the storage, and we traded it for our lights in the show. But now we're wondering, God, what happened? Well, you left Jesus in the storage building. It's time to open up the storage building and say, God, I messed up. I got out of alignment, but my Bible said that the moment that I call on Jesus, he done saved me, forgave me, reconciliation, restored my my path, but we got to have a church get back on the altar. Back on the altar. Look at your neighbor and say, back on the altar. But the enemy fights with facts, misinformation, and dif- disinformation. If we go to the Bible, there's a content I want to bring up, and it's going to take us two parts to do this. I have you here for four hours. That was just an introduction. That was my introduction. We're going to go to Joshua 6, verse 1 and 11, and then we're going to read 18 and 19. And when you got it, go ahead and stand for the reading of God's Word. I felt like Brother Harvey, man. That's just my introduction. Joshua 6, verse 1 and 11, and then we'll read 18 and 19. When you got it, go ahead and say, Word. It says, now Jericho was securely shut up because all the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all your men of war. You shall go around the city once. This shall you do six days. Look at your neighbor say six. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of the ram horn before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass. Look at your neighbor say shall. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Let your neighbor say shout. It said, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of the ram's horn before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. Verse 8, so it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpet and the ark of the covenant and the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priest who blew the trumpet and the rear guard came after the ark while the priest continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua commanded the people saying, you shall not shout. Lucy never said it's important to know when you shout. It says, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shall. Then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circled the city going around it once, and then they came into camp and lodged in the camp. Verse 18 and 19. And you by all means abstain from the accursed thing. Lest you become a curse when you take up the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and the gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are to concentrate it to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for your word, God. We want to thank you for you've already been in this house. God, I thank you for the enlightenment and the truth and the revelation of who you are. God, we give you glory and honor. And everybody said... Amen, and you may be seated. <clears throat> As we have discussed already the types of information, we see that how can this be 
tied into this Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 and 11 and 18 and 19. When we understand this, we had the facts, we had opportunity for misinformation and the disinformation, but we had one wall. Let your neighbor say one. There was one obstacle in the way, but there was a point where Joshua, knowing that it would take seven days for this wall to come, and there was direct order. How many knows that the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice? So not only do we have to understand the altar and the renewing of our mind, but we have to have what? Obedience. Here in this contents, we find that the Israelites have crossed over the Jordan, but yet to come to a place of a fortress that is in the way, in their walk, and in their return, and the possession of the Cain, of Canaan, the promised land in which God had promised the children of Israel. We know that they had been in a place of wandering for 40 years, that the generation that had known war and the fighting had, fa had passed away. They were coming to a place of Gilgal, a place of cutting, the restoring of the covenant, restoring of the altar, and there was a fortress that was in the way. Joshua, being the man of God he is, he begins to get orders from God that begins to give him specifics to what to do. This is why it's important, one, that he without vision, the people shall perish. There has to be revelation in the church more than ever because we're living with an enemy that is strategic. You hear me? They're strategic. They know your past better than you do. They know your grandma's problem. They know your daddy's problem and so on and so on. They know how to know what makes you tick and pull you out of alignment. But the difference is, is there is a spirit now that resides in you that has given you an assignment. Let you never say assignment. But we live in a day and time now that we feel that when we get saved that God didn't give you an assignment. That God just saved you just to be less than everybody else. This is misinformation of the enemy. If you understand that Joshua could not bring the wall down on his own but yet he had vision. It took each person in the tribe accordingly knowing their position and their assignment working together in unity to accomplish the job. When we understand this, why is it important that we understand the facts and the truth? One, Joshua's integrity had to be intact. Where do we lose some of the assignment in the church? The loss of the integrity of the men of God. So they don't follow the order. But how many of those man will fail you, but God never will? So first of all, is if you cannot line up with an order that God has called on an assignment, then you might be in the wrong assignment. Because one act of disobedience fails the whole operation. Look, you never say one. When we understand what was going, Joshua gave the assignment that said, this is what we're going to do. It was strategic. If they'd have done anything out of order, it would not have worked accordingly because God is a step of what? Order. I believe we're living in a day and time now that we have a strategic order in the church that we need to line up and stand up. But the problem is, is that the misinformation and disinformation that we see daily how many knows that the eye is the light of the body? If the, light, if the eye be evil, then the whole body be evil. But if the light, eye be on Jesus, then the whole body is good. We talked about this on Thursday. We can't be watching smut and nasty things on TV and be mad that the enemy is fighting you with lustful thoughts. Why? You're entertaining that. It's not that God's spanking you or whatever. You're giving the devil place. And the Bible said don't give no foothold to the enemy. We have to be guarded and diligently. What did Peter say in 1 Peter? Be sober, be diligently, seeking after the Lord. Because why? Your adversary, the devil, is roaring like a lion who he may devour. What am I trying to tell you? The moment that you allow yourself to be entertained and off the off mind of the assignment and what God is calling, there is an enemy roaring, waiting to devour you. 
We live in a day and time now that the assignment is compromised because, we, uh, you know, God gives us means to spread the gospel. But some would rather just sit at home and watch service on TV. And that's fine. God can move. But the Bible said, do not forsake the fellowship and the gathering of the saints. There is something powerful when a body of believers come in one place, one accord. It didn't say in Acts 2 Pentecost that they were watching Facebook and social media over here in different places. They were in one place, one mind, one accord, and then the spirit fell. So how has the enemy fought the order of the church and how we advance to bring the wall? By the means of social media. It's a good mean, but we have too many people that should be at church but don't come to church because they like a bedside Baptist church rather. Uh oh. And you're wondering why you can't come out of where you're at because you don't have no saints to encourage you where you're at. It's not that God said, I don't like you and that you're going to get punished for not coming to church but the Bible said that when your brother and sisters in fall when you're weak and weary you have brothers and sisters that know the assignment of the body that pick you up and help you move forward to keep the mark to keep the rank to keep the fight to keep the assignment but if the enemy isolates you by yourself you find yourself boring with the mind wondering who can help you you're praying and seeking and you're wondering why well God told us we need body of believers and brothers and sisters to lift one another up. Have you felt that the enemy, they're not separated. The enemy's not separated. The enemy is united. The Bible said a house divided cannot stand. And the Bible said that the enemy's house is together. They know their assignment. What is their assignment? To destroy the church of the living God. As the Bible tells us where one puts a thousand, two puts what? Ten thousand. Bible said where any two or three are gathered in thy name, whatever we touch on, I'm in the midst of it. What is the enemy after? He's after your unity, your gathering, the fellowship. He's after the disinformation and all this right here to cause fear and propaganda of the mind that keeps the church from coming together. I'm here to tell you, use wisdom. If you're sick, stay home. Use your wisdom of God, but do not allow propaganda and fear to keep you from the house of God. If you can go grocery shopping, you can come to the house of God and worship. If you can go watch movies, you can come to the house of God and worship. If you can still work your nine to five, you can come to the house and worship. But the enemy somehow has separated church from all the necessities of what you need to do. Because why? Because there is a true fact to this. That when the body of believers come together unified, not bound by fear, but know the facts that if God be for me, then no sickness nor disease shall come near me. When we walk unified in purpose, the walls of the enemy are coming down. The enemy knows his days are numbered just like the assignment that God gave unto Joshua but it takes the whole children of Israel God's redeemed to come together but know our appointed time we got too many ministers that are shouting off at the mouth and it's not the appointed time yet and we're wondering why the enemy's in the Kool-Aid you're telling the enemy the assignment we have to learn to be diligent slow to speak know when it's time to shout know when it's time to ride know when it's time to attack let me tell you this is the preparation period. God gave you a revelation. Be careful who you go and tell. Be an insider in the camp that's waiting to infiltrate where you're at because the enemy does not know God's plan. But if he can get you to speak it early, then he can try to intercept it. But I'm here to tell somebody that the interception is over. We have to put our mind on Jesus. As the Bible said in Psalms 91, that no pestilence or disease shall devour, shall come into my home. I am protected by the most high living God. But we got to know our rank, know our step, and keep on moving for Jesus. But the information is out, and the misinformation and disinformation, so the church is scared. The church is scared to come together. The The church is scared to worship. But when the church binds the thought of fear and operates in authority, every devil in hell's about to come down. Every stronghold's about to come down. I got in his saints that says, sign me up, God. I'm ready to get in the army. I got my orders, and fear will not contain me. When we know what the enemy's working, he's working in our minds, our fear, because why? There's orders that God has given. Revelation said that the fearful shall not 
enter into the gates of heaven. We miss that. We got to bind the spirit of fear off the church. I'm so tired of the enemy. Now listen, use your wisdom, but do not allow fear to determine how you're going to worship God. If you've made a sound, conscious mind to what you're going to do and God has gave you release, that's between you and God. It's not for the pulpit to determine. You work it out with God what you're going to do, but do not allow fear to determine a decision you make. As the Bible said, be not fearful, and he said that the fearful are separated at the time of judgment. God's not looking for a fearful generation. He's looking for a victorious generation. That said, death does not scare me because the Bible said that death has lost its sting through the victory through Christ Jesus. Why are we fearful in the church? Everybody worried about dying. Can I tell you, everybody in this room is going to die. If that's what determines your worship, you need to pray and get your heart right. Our victory is in death. The sting is gone because now we're heading to our heavenly home. But we got to fight while we're still here. And the enemy's keeping you isolated in fear because there's a work inside of you that's about to bring down a wall. So the enemy gets you caught up in fear in something you already got victory in. You already got victory in it. I'm not trying to knock on anybody, but I'm here to tell you the assignment of the enemy that's worketh in the church. Every assignment that we're in is in a fear season, a fear tactic, strategy, off the information. But just like Joshua, we got an assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, we got an assignment. But it requires obedience. It took everybody. Imagine if one would have got fearful and lost their rank and lost their step. What would have happened? The whole thing would have fell apart. They had to trust in the living God. That said, this looks crazy. Could you imagine a fortress? It said, fortified, shut up, nobody come in. How many of those right now, we got some walls in this generation that it seems nobody's going to come out of it. We're divided by nonsense. We, we're so busy debating politics and vaccines and unvaccines. That's what the enemy wants. He wants you divided. And some of us sitting in here now, we got our different pre-mindsets on what this sermon is. I'm not here to tell you that I'm telling you one way or another. I'm here to tell you, I don't care if you're vaccine, unvaccine, what you think about it, but there is one thing what the word said that you cannot be fearful and serve the living God. If you're fearful of death and cardinality, search yourself and find you. You are robbing yourself of victory and of your assignment because the enemy has misled you and has got you fearful over something you had victory in. Why could the saints of the old time and the apostles shout when they were getting stoned? How could they have victory? Because death means I get to see him face to face. This is not my stopping ground. What have other held up, I am set free in. We're living in a day and time that the church right now is the misinformation and disinformation that it's all right to be fearful, and it's not. We need to have a sound mind. Like I said, if you can make a conscious decision, you know what God has called, that is you. But do not allow fear to determine how you operate in the kingdom and the assignment of what God has given. Because it takes one person to be out of alignment that causes the whole plan not to operate. People say, God, why can't you come back yet? Let me ask you that. God, where are you? All this hell break loose in there. Why ain't you come back yet? Well, he's a graceful, grace and merciful God. And if he come back right now, there'd be a lot of his believers that would split hell wide open off the misinformation. That's why the Bible said that the former and the latter shall come out and he shall pour out his spirit and the remnant shall raise up. Because there'll be a generation that rises up that worships the God in body, mind, and in spirit. That no part of the world deters me. My mind is set on Jesus. Walking after the assignment and what he has for us in the last day. We are not ready as a body yet to walk out the end day assignment because a church is bound by the fear of the world and by the things of the world. But I know what God is saying in this day and time that there's about to be an enlightenment that God is exposing the plan and the full of the enemy that there's going to be a remnant raised up that's going to march after Jesus that no weapon comes against them I might get COVID but guess what COVID ain't going to heaven that's something of the natural that's right COVID will not enter in heaven but if you got the vaccine that might protect you on earth but if you ain't got the blood stain that's where you'll lie in the dirt and you'll have to meet the one of 
above the dirt. I wish somebody would be more worried about your salvation and walking after Jesus because all the diseases of the earth ain't going to heaven with you. They'll stay on this earth because the heavens and the earth shall fade, but the word shall not fade away. I'm here to tell you, God's going to wipe this world clean. He's going to burn it up in fire, but restore it back to Eden, walking in the dew with him. There'll be no disease. There'll be no famine. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more death, but we got to walk it out in faith of what God has already promised you on that day. That's why he said, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come as it is in heaven on earth. God's waiting for a generation that says, I'm about to bring the kingdom down. I'm about to walk in the authority of the kingdom now. But we have a church that's still bound up by the world that cannot represent a kingdom. You can't represent a kingdom fearful of death because there'll be no more dying over there. I wish somebody know that song that said eternal life, my atonement, my atonement healing by the grace of God. I wish somebody real quick would go ahead and say, I'm representing the kingdom today. I'm representing the kingdom. I ain't got to wait for the flying by. I got to activate my faith. I got to get my instruction. If he abides, greater is he. What's keeping the spirit from operating in this time? Fear, church. Recognize the fear. The name above all names is Jesus. It's time for the church to raise up and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear off the church. I bind the spirit of fear and the vision out of the church. But let us raise up to be a kingdom-minded church. It says, though COVID might come, I still got victory. Though I might get cancer, I still got victory. Because why? I'm living for that day of the kingdom. But we're so worried about who's got this and that. That's sad, and I wish God could heal them, and he can. But they got the ultimate victory. They saw it all the way through. They didn't back down, but we got to have a generation raise up. We have the total healing already. We have the total victory. We have our assignment, but where does the enemy get a second guess in our assignment? The faith in the assignment. The faith in the word. The obstacle in front of me is greater than the God that's for me. Man. We know Joshua had the word from God, and we have a word from God that says there's victory in Jesus. By his stripes I'm healed. We have the sign that, that he said, I redeem, I reconcile, I'm near the brokenhearted. The word won't return unto void. I've given you keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, be loosed in heaven. And we use that for devils. But how many knows right now you're binding what God wants to do by the lack of your faith to move in what God wants to do? The enemy's got us living between two worlds. A double life. A double life. And how do we live a double life? You're either living with Jesus or you're living as you. There's a double lie. A double life that we're fighting. When I look at the mirror, you're looking at the enemy. You. He can't touch Jesus. He can't touch the Holy Ghost. It already defeated the grave. It already defeated hell. And it already beat the devil. Who's he fighting? You. And our faith has to activate. And how does the enemy know this? The spirit of God and the word of God is already victorious because it already finished it. So how do I keep the church from operating? Make us think we're earning it as we go. You couldn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But he already finished it and equipped you. Now by faith, we walk in it. But how can we walk in something that the church don't preach about? We entertain the cardinality because that will sell. That gets people's butts in a pew because I want to talk about your symptom. But when I give you the answer of freedom and says, why am I going to entertain something God set you free from? Church is too busy canceling things. You ought to be casting out. 
Church is too busy talking about things you've already been set free from. We are giving it place by talking about it. I don't know about you, but I'm done talking about stuff God already set you free from. I'm done entertaining it. I'm done trying to follow into the drama cycle. I'm going to break the chain. Because why? My Bible said no gossip, no drama shall enter in the kingdom of heaven or pride or envy. If you got something to say about me, take it up with God. I'm going to keep on walking after Jesus. Because why? Justin is dead. Everything you got to say about me is on the cross. And he finished that work already. I have an assignment. I cannot break my reign. Because why? The wall is coming down there. Children of God shut up inside these walls that cannot come out. But we need somebody to say, but don't let me fall victim to the false information, disinformation. I have an assignment in this end day time to lift up my voice when God says shout. I got anybody in the house today that can say, Lord, I'm going to shout when the appointed time comes. I'm going to have victory when the appointed time come but we have to get our orders and alignment and walk it out look at your neighbor say walk it out he fights our mind he gets us seesaw in between two worlds the bible says you cannot serve two masters you'll love one and you'll hate the other now don't get me wrong God don't want you to be broken disgusted the bible doesn't say that neither Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 7. You bless coming and bless going. You're the head and not to tell, the lender and not the borrower. He wants you to be prosperous. But we can't have our focus just on prosperity. You got to have it on him and a kingdom. God can't pour out kingdom riches if you ain't living in the kingdom. Because if he blessed you with it, where would you sow it at? And that's the product we got now. It's people, when you get a blessing, you want to sit on it. And you wonder why that's all you get. The Bible said that he gave gold to three people, some multiplying some. Some of them dug a hole and buried it, and that was all they got. They got cut down and burned down. What am I trying to tell you? Everything God gives you is for you to be able to bless others and to sow into this community. But we've lost this generation. If you go back to the 1950s or even on, you know what? They were good to people. They could shake hands, help one another. You didn't need food stamps. You didn't need all this other mess because why? The church took care of people. Because why? The people bought in knowing that if I give, it's better to give than give. And they knew it wasn't about earthly measures, but we have a kingdom agenda to advance in this day and time. But the church got stingy but yet want to be blessed. And let me tell you, God can't bless stinginess. And that's everybody in the church. It ain't just the church. If you ain't willing to be able to give into your community. Don't be mad that the church can't give in the community. You're part of the community. You have lost your reign. When the church understands that we are all in this together accordingly with one wall and all the information that comes together, it takes each and every one of us to accomplish the job of God. It wasn't just Joshua that did it. Josh was the visionary. But then there was the troops the worshipers. There was the rear guard, the army that went before and each of them were significant in what they they did it wasn't any lesser or better but it takes all of us coming together in an army knowing the truth and knowing what we got to do and walking after the purpose we have to change the culture of the church we have to come back to the assignment because the fact of it is, is why we're disputing and crying in the church about how somebody hurt your feelings and you don't agree that and we're over here arguing about who's right and who's wrong. There's a world dying and going to hell out there. And shame on you if you're part of that. If you can spend more time gossiping, calling up, trying to prop people to get information, but you can't go spread the gospel, shame on you. Get on an altar and pray. You have lost your place in the army. And I'm done with the attack of the enemy. I'm done with people that are all the time trying to find out this and who's right and who's that and who's that. We have an assignment that we got to do. And there is a wall that's got to come down and debating and trying to argue amongst each other. That ain't going to do it. You're doing exactly what the enemy wants you in your little
little kennel. You ain't taking no ground. And that's why you got people going to different churches and this and this. And all we got is disorder all over the place. Nobody's getting saved. All you got to do is churches full of people that get hurt from other churches. And you got to find one that's going to be okay with your mess and pat you on the back that says you can do this. I don't know about you, but eventually you need to break the chain and change your life and get a hold of Jesus and say it ain't the church building. It ain't the pastor. I got orders and a wall that's going to come down. That's why the Bible said they're sheep and goats. And you know what? They both sound the same, but only the sheep will offer up something in return to the shepherd. I'm here tired of goat. We got a bunch of goats in this area and we need to raise up and be sheep and flock of God and let God get a hold of you. Goats and sheep sound the same. They both bad and sound the same. But the difference is, is one ain't going to give nothing. They're just going to eat everything. You know what a goat does? It eats the, you eat your furniture. It'll eat everything around because why? It's only in it for itself. But a sheep will offer up covering for the shepherd that is tending them. I don't know about you, but don't be a goat. Be a sheep and get in alignment with God. If you want the 99 to come after one, then stop being the goat and be the sheep that God's going to come after. But you got to let him get a hold of the heart. We're living in a day and time now. We, we can't play around with it. You know, hey, you might have two people in this church. That'd be all right, but my conscience will be clear. I ain't in it to grow a church. I'm in here to get so saved. If you don't like what you hear, guess what? Go find somebody that's going to tickle your ears because there'll be many people that deceive many and tickle your ear and hear what you want to hear. You want to hear how you can do whatever you want, have it your way, come to church, and they're going and you should be able to control what goes on on the platform. That ain't your job to control. That's his job to control. I'm going to preach what God gives, and if you don't like it, guess what? Find another church. But too busy what we got. We don't got no assignment. We ain't got no order in the church. We got everybody that wants to be part of the army, but nobody willing to listen to the direction of the one that's over the army. I don't care if you go to this church, this church, this church. Guess what? We all serve the same God. That means we all should be unified for our purpose. And the reason the wall ain't coming down in Rossville is because you got too many clicks on how they want to worship. I think it ought to go for here. We should shout now. But instead, we all need to get on an altar and pray where men of God can come together and know the wall that's in front of us and keep our rank, keep our mark and know when we're going to shout and the whole thing's going to come down. I'm not just happy with one drug house. I'm ready for the whole dang thing to come down. Run drugs out of Rossville. Run this thing out where God can be the glory but we're too happy for the motion of it that nobody recognizes the real deal anymore. That's because they can shout and run don't mean the Holy Ghost field devils can act a fool. But we're in trouble, and we got to recognize it. we got to know our orders and our assignment. Because if we don't know our assignment, all we will be is a mausoleum of what was used to be the church. You got caught, gutted, and now you are as stuffed up religion, being embalmed with something. You look good, but eventually you're going to decay still. It's only by the blood and circulation of the heart that keeps you alive. They can make up you look good, but if you ain't hooked to the vine and knowing the orders, all we are is a mausoleum, what used to be the church. I don't know about you. I'm still the church. I can still move in authority. I can still take it back. I can still operate in all this. But we cannot operate when there is division and gossip among people. You got to break the chain. The church has got to wake up. It's a stronghold over Rossville, Georgia, over all the Georgia. All they want to do is gossip, discredit one another to grow a church. I'm tired of filling churches with church folk. We need to fill church with lost folk where they can be saved and watch them do it. I'm fine if you want to come visit a church, but I don't want more church folk. I want lost folk. I want to plant out in this community and watch God turn it upside down. And if I got to, I'll preach every day on it. We got to clean it up in the church before you can clean it up out there. You can't expect to mark a wall when you don't even know your place in the church and our orders and our orders are that he be the glory, be lifted up among all things. I might be mad at you, but I ain't going to go gossip. I'm going to bring it to you. Because why? The Bible said if you got a fault with your brother, you bring it to your brother privately. You don't go air it out to the church. You're giving the devil place in your church. It's not a devil problem. 
problem. It's a tongue problem. If somebody offended you in the church, go to that brother privately. Tell him how there's a fall. And if there's a fall and he doesn't listen, then you grab you some elders in the church and then bring it before the church. And if they don't do it right after you bring the elders, then you bring it before the church. But what we got is immediately when there's a fall, you go to the whole church and everybody's got seesawed over here. Everybody's marching different walls because you're not unified by the gossip and the poison being spread by the body of believers. It ain't the devil. It's our tongues that are causing us to fall. But it's misinformation. Misinformation. And the enemy will hit you right where it hurts, the closest. I ain't sitting over here. I ain't trying to rebuke nobody. I'm, I've lived it. I know what it's like to be lied on. I know what it's like to be gossiped about. You see me have a pouty face and hate on anybody over it? Nope. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach the gospel. Because it will work itself out. You can hate on me, call about it, how I'm this and this. But at the end of the day, God validated me. And I got my orders. Either we get in line or we need to find to have a different talk. But I'm done playing games. I'm done playing games. I didn't come to pastor a church. I came to change a community. And you got orders and strongholds to bring down. If the pastor call gets in the way of it, I'll resign from pastor. Because I ain't going to be called up in this politic mess. We got orders. Either we're going to get in line or you can find you another pastor. Because I'm done playing the game. Because the Bible tells us we got to meditate day and night that you may observe and according to all that is written, for it will make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. And have not I commanded you, be strong and good courage. Be not afraid. Dismay for the Lord your God is where, with you wherever you go. We got to meditate on the word. There's a lot of things we can meditate right now. There's a lot of misinformation and disinformation. And to be honest about it, I'm sick of it. Everything is in love. But how many is tired of the cycle that you see going on? I mean, honestly, how many is tired of the cycle? I mean, is this what a Christian life is? On a phone call, talking about things, texting things, wondering what kind of dirt you can get. We have orders. There's a wall that needs to come down. But it takes all of us coming together. Now some of you, you might get mad about it. And you got questions, I'll talk to you about it. I ain't scary. But one thing I know for sure. If you don't allow God to fully put you in the ranks. And be who God called you to be. You'll be roaming looking you'll never find your place you'll always be able to find a fault with something but until you root it in God and what the information is and know there's an assignment there is a dying and lost generation going to hell out there and the church is too busy arguing amongst each other that you can't even keep your eye on the harvest Lord forgive us in this house this morning God, let our eyes be on the harvest. God, we got our orders, Lord. Don't give the devil place. Raise up. I mean, uh, this morning and say, God, I'm going to raise up. God, I'm tired of the cycle. I'm tired of talking about people. I'm tired of looking at people. Lord, I'm ready for the God of hope and peace. Deliver people. And you can change that when you start praying rather than gossiping. There's a lot of hurt that can come from it. There can be a lot of sleepless nights. There can be a lot of anxiety that comes from it. A lot of what? Misinformation. Because the only thing that's true is the Word of God in Jesus. I've seen a lot of people over the last year, not just here, 
they allowed their minds to get intoxicated. And there's a lot of them still roaming, trying to find a place. Because you know what? If you'll outstep when God doesn't call you out of there, but, but there's something in your mind, you'll pay the price. It wasn't the enemy. You got out of the order of what God had you. And I'm done seeing that cycle of the roaming and wondering, God, what are we going to do? Rather, let's get a hold of what God has called you to do. And I believe we're sitting in a house tonight, this morning, that each and every one of you have an assignment. You have a call on your life. But I know the very realness of an enemy that tries to get between your head. Question, are you really where you need to be? So in all the disinformation, if it don't line up with Jesus, lifting up your brother, a path of restoration, that ain't of God. So today, don't let the enemy use you to push the assignment, but rather break the lane. Get in position. The wall's coming down. So if you would, everybody stand. head bowed. I want you to take this with seriousness this morning. That anointing's in here. For those that were here Thursday, God did a powerful thing in here. He set free some mindset, and I feel that same anointing.